Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm coming to you guys with a follow-up Friday video. Follow-up Friday. And that is on this Shoei RF 1400. Now I've been riding with this helmet now for several months. And overall, I have to say, I am very impressed. Uh, I have been a big Shoei fan. None of this is sponsored. Uh, matter of fact, I just happened to buy a Shoei RFSR when I first started riding, and it's been the brand that I've been riding with ever since. So I am very happy with these helmets, uh, and that when I say these helmets, I mean the RFSR, the RF 1200, which I rode for with an entire season, and now I have graduated up to the RF 1400. Now, the only reason I went to the uh, 1400 was honestly because the uh, RFSR that I started with I'm not a huge fan of the design cue of it. It's not bad, but uh, I decided that I liked the RF 1200 at the time better, and it was more of a premium helmet, which I will agree. The interior linings and uh, some of the, the components to the helmet feel a little bit more superior, but for the price difference, I would argue that it may or may not be worth it. All depends on what your budget is. If you're looking to save a few bucks, you can't go wrong with the RFSR. Now, when the RF 1400 came out, I was looking at it and I almost didn't get it, but they did say that the ventilation had increased and that was one thing I will say from the RFSR to the RF1200 was that I had noticed that the ventilation on the uh, 1200 wasn't quite as good or up to snuff as the RFSR. Now it was never bad enough for me to go backwards to the RFSR uh, and I, that says something because I'm in Arizona today, right now it's 101 degrees outside and there are days I'm riding it's well into the 110 plus, sometimes 115. So ventilation to me is a pretty important metric. And I never went backwards from the RF 1200 to the RFSR, uh, so it wasn't that bad. But I did want to see if it was any better. And I will say the RF 1400 is substantially better than the uh, 1200. The reason for that is you just have more ventilation holes and it makes sense that that's going to lead to more airflow through the helmet. And uh, it is noticeable. So. Uh, is it nice and cool inside this helmet on a 110 degree day? No, it's still sweaty. I honestly don't know how much of a difference uh, a helmet's going to make ventilation wise when you're in those kinds of days. But the one thing that's important to me to kind of make a point of is that I never find it so uncomfortable in a helmet on these hot days that the argument of not wearing one would make sense to me. Matter of fact, I've pointed out several times before, even wearing a jacket, yes, a black jacket, uh, is much cooler than having your skin just roasting in the sun. I find after about a half an hour of riding uh, in the sun down here in the Southwest, that you start to feel like a fried potato chip and uh, that's just not comfortable to me. And I find that as long as you're moving, that wearing gear, is much more comfortable to uh, keep the sun off of you. It's also the same reason why you see landscapers out uh, all summer long wearing long sleeve shirts is because there's a science behind that and they're cooler than if they're wearing uh, short sleeve shirts. Just kind of how it works. So the overall fit and finish of the 1400 is by far the best out of any of the showy helmets that I've worn. RFSR 1200 up to the 1400. So the biggest thing I want to talk about with this helmet is the change. They used to have the visor lift over on the side so you can kind of grab it with your thumb, flip it up and uh, get that visor up. And now they've moved it over to the chin mount. So now it locks, which now it's locked and there's a little button here to unlock it. And some people complain about that. I find it to be more just an ergonomics thing that uh, you need to kind of retrain muscle memory. Uh, it's gotten to the point now where I can hit it pretty much 100% of the time. Just kind of feel out the bottom of it, hit it, pop it up, and there you go. Not a huge deal. The one thing that I will say that I don't like about it being in the middle is that I find that sometimes if there's something on your glove or finger, if you're riding without gloves, you can kind of get this weird smudge down here that's just in line sight with the speedometer. And it's not a big deal, but it is just enough to be slightly annoying. But again, very, very minor critique that I have. I really don't mind it being in the center. Uh, it is nice to get a nice positive lock on the visor if you need it. I'm sure that's probably a bigger deal on sport bikes. Uh, but, you know, here I am riding on my 2018 Heritage with a windscreen. And I do want to talk about that. So it's funny because I have people that talk about, well, 
you can't talk about buffeting you have that big camera on there and you got a windscreen and it's different you're 100 percent right the only reason why you know how to say that is because you're watching this video and you can see the camera on my helmet and you can see the windscreen so that means you're an educated consumer and if you're riding a sport bike you would take into account that everything i'm saying is behind this windscreen and with a gopro on my chin so uh, it is obviously difficult for me to talk about head buffeting uh, from a bike that's getting clean air over the front and uh, you know versus a bike that's getting uh, you know have a, I guess I'm getting it like maybe right at the top of my head is about yeah the, the, the wind hits me pretty much right here so that's what I deal with you'll deal with something different every bike is going to be different every rider is going to be different kind of the nature of it so with that being said it's uh, also something that you can kind of test out if you just poke your head up higher and that is when you start to actually get significantly more airflow because now the helmet is getting wind right somewhere about halfway up the visor and uh, that's kind of what I'm experiencing at that point so again if you're watching YouTube videos and you're taking some sort of commentary uh, into consideration before you buy something take a look at what the person that's reviewing it is you know what's their environment because that's going to drastically change things so yes if you're on a 2018 heritage and you are six foot one 215 pounds and have an xl head you're probably going to experience something pretty similar to me but if you're 510 and on a sport bike and 100 and i don't know 80 pounds yeah you're probably gonna have a different experience so uh, you can save that commentary. It's it's kind of funny when I see stuff like that, that, um, you know, people, obviously, if you can judge, then you're doing a good job being an educated consumer. Well done. So this helmet has been great. I've had no issues with it. Uh, another issue people talk about is having problems getting their uh, communications devices on these helmets. It was a little bit of a struggle to get it on there. It wasn't impossible. Just had to wrestle it on there a little bit. Honestly, I find those to be difficult to get on most helmets, at least between the RFSR and RF1200. This one was a little bit more difficult, but at the end of the day, I was able to do it. It wasn't really a big deal. Now, because I have this Cardo that's been transferred over, this is now the third helmet that it's lived on, it has uh, probably broken in a little bit. Uh, I do know that one of like the rubber pads on the clip that goes into the helmet was gone, and that probably helped get it on there a little bit more, but I really don't care. It is on there as snug as can be, not an issue. I don't see that as a reason not to buy it, so again, take that as you will. That is kind of my take here on the Shoei RF 1400. I think it is an absolutely awesome helmet. I love Shoei, again, not sponsored at all. This is uh, the, all three helmets are helmets that I bought, and I think they're phenomenal. So I will probably rock with Shoei for, uh, at least for now, I have no problem with them. I trust them with my life and a huge fan of the fit and finish comfort uh, and everything. Now, the last thing I will mention, I do have the photo photochromaic, I think it's called, the Transitions Lens uh, visor that is coming. It's ordered, who knows when it'll be here. It's a $200 purchase. It is not cheap by no means, but I've had it uh, on the RFSR and RF1200. The only reason I need to buy a new one now is because they did change to the uh, CWR F2 version of this uh, visor, which is different. So you gotta buy a new one. But the one that I had lasted for three years and wasn't really showing any signs of fading. So uh, I think that's pretty solid. And wearing prescription sunglasses and having to switch between regular glasses and sunglasses or night and day, it's kind of a pain. And I experienced that when I traveled down to Georgia uh, to hang out with John that uh, you know riding at night having to switch visors over and stuff like that it's just kind of a huge pain and if you can afford to alleviate that pain point I would recommend it that's kind of my my take on the whole thing uh, whether or not I do a whole review on that photochromatic transitions lens visor or not is yet to be seen uh, I'm not sure if it warrants really a whole video on itself but uh, maybe I'll do another follow-up Friday on this RF 1400 at some point and uh, make that part of that. But uh, we'll see. So, guys, that is my wrap-up on my follow-up Friday for the Shoei RF 1400. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.